Tonight's going to be kind of a little bit of a, of a different kind of message. And the other day I was uh, I was in prayer and I felt like the Spirit of God gave me this revelation. And I knew that it would be coming out in a message sometime soon. So let me just kind of communicate uh, the, uh, where we're coming from in this right here. Because I'm going to... So that will give you a little bit of a little bit of bird's eye perspective what this message is about. This message is about for people that want to change mm-hmm. from the realm of the flesh to the Amen. spirit. Amen. Yes. They want to change from self power to God power. Yes. They want to come to the place of, of stop acting and living independent of God and become dependent upon God. Yes. And uh, what I'm talking really about, uh, what we're talking about coming out of Egypt. That's the purpose of that desert. And you never know when it gets to the promised land until they tell that spirit of independence, I'll do what I want to do, I'll say what I want to say, I'll go what I want to go, I'll do what I want to do. Until that's broken, you don't get to the promised land. Because the promised land means humility. As long as I'm exalting myself over the knowledge of God, you don't get into king land. Okay, so that book out there, the two books of the top shelf all the way to the end there, The, the Spiritual Man and the Release of the Spirit by Watchman E., addressed in a lot of these issues that greatly help me. Okay, so what we're going to talk about tonight, well, uh, if, if someone just wants to come in and have no intention on meeting with God such a way they're changing, this is going to be real boring. But if you want if you want to meet with God, you want your life yes, to change, you want yes. to grow, you want to meet, you, have yeah. to meet, you want the presence of God, you want the fullness of yes. the thing God, it's going to make a lot of sense to you tonight. Mm-hmm. Okay, so God wants to, He's going to break that independent spirit that we've become sure. dependent upon God, mm-hmm. And what that what that basically means is that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are the higher than our ways. Yeah, so when I when I would get in trouble was that I constantly I would make decisions and I assume that God would bless my decision. Yeah. But God said go this way and I went that way mm-hmm. and it just didn't work real well. Okay, God wants to change it from prayerless to being prayerful. Yes. He wants yes. to change it from, from feeling very casual, not even not even convicted, not even reading the word. Mm-hmm. that we would begin to once again devour God's Word. Yeah. He wants to change us from self-idolatry to God being our God. Mm-hmm. He wants to change us from being stubborn to being meek yes. to being meek and humble yes. in His sight. Yes. And this, yes. is, this is a real biggie. He wants to change us from being in control yes. of our life to giving God control. Yes. That's yes. very threatening yes. to many people. That was threatening yes. to me. God wants to change us from just being saved that Jesus be Lord of our life. And there's a great big difference right yes, there. Yes. There's a big difference. And uh, yes, God. Amen. He wants to, the last one I'm going to share is that God wants to change us from running and avoiding staying away from our own personal Gethsemane mm. that we would be willing to go to the cross Amen. and die to self yes, and on the Lord. other side live their resurrected life. That brings us to oh. Exodus chapter 23, which is basically going to illustrate kind of what I want to say. And then we're going to go to several different scriptures tonight. It's going to help us. It's going to make some sense, okay? And I think that this is going to help you tonight. That if you, if, uh, how many of you, how many of you, sometimes uh, there are seasons in their life. It's like, it's not that, and, and I've gone through seasons where I wasn't, I just wasn't exceptionally hungry. But that, but there's, there's times then when you're hungry, but you can feel so much opposition coming against you. Mm. And this means you're going to address the people that you're hungry, you want to go on, but all these different things are coming at yes. you from different uh, angles. And tonight's going to give you an understanding some of the reasons why that happened and what God wants yeah. to accomplish through that. Okay, so in Exodus chapter 23 and verse 29, I will not drive them out before thee before one year, lest the land become desolate, the beasts of the field multiply against thee. But little by little, Amen. I will drive them out before thee. Amen. And tell, this is very important, little by little, I will drive them out. There can be things in our mind, our will, our emotion, our body, our sexual life, and our finances. There can be a whole lot going on within us. Yeah. There's, now remember, there's a land without, but there's a land within. It's hard to take the land without when, when you haven't given God the land within. Amen. And that's what we'll all over focusing on. So he said, little by little, I will drive them out from before thee until... You are increased. Now this, what I'm going to say right now is one of the most important things that will come out of my mouth tonight. You're going to see people that have been in church 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and they think because they've been in church 30, 40, 50 years 
that God really ought to do something for them, but someone else has been in church five or eight years and has outgrown the person yeah. because it's not how long have our body been in the church building. Yeah. It's that how much are we growing, are yeah. we changing? When God yeah. gives me a word, yeah. do I come into a when God gives me a word in the and the word has an assignment, will I come into alignment with the assignment? It's not the hearers that are justified, it's the doers of the word. Amen. So we come when you when you become desperate. God give me an ear to hear what the yes, Spirit is saying. Yes. And then when we hear it, the fear of God is so powerful in that, yes. that we've got to obey because yes. we don't want to miss because God, God's thoughts are so much higher than our thoughts yes. and His way is so much higher than our way. Yes. We really need to hear what the Spirit is saying. We can be deceived thinking, I heard, I went to church and I heard, I heard, I heard the preacher. Oh, what a, what a good message. Oh, Pastor Bill, Pastor Brandon, what a good message. But didn't obey a thing that God told me to do in that message. Mm -hmm. So we can actually come to church and oh, leave yeah. in worse condition. We came in because we heard the word, but we hardened our heart and said, Today or any day, if we hear his voice, yeah. do not harden our heart. They didn't That's a day that provoke God's anger, departing from a living God yeah. because of the deceitfulness of sin. Yeah. Okay, so the point that right here said, Little by little, I'm judging them out until you are increased and inherit the land. So it's not how long that we have been in church. Amen. It's that how much, how much alignment. Uh, how many other we can you can go to the exercise club and not exercise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not not going to do you a whole lot of good. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? We got the as we would exercise and work out our body. Then there's we got to exercise our faith. Yeah. And so we yeah. we know, people think that they're winning because they come in the here. What, the, what God's saying, but they don't do what God's saying, and so they miss out everything, and then they become jealous and envious because someone else comes to the church, and they've not been saved very long, and they're being used in the gift, they're, they're being, you know, they've got powerful knowing all kinds of things happening, God's really moving their life, someone else in the church, 30, 40, 50 years, and God's not really active in God, God's not moving, they become very angry, they become angry with God, angry at the preacher, angry at, at, at different people, but what it is, they became very... We, we become dangerous because churchianity. Yeah. We get in this yeah. rut we, and we hear, but we don't do. Mm. Okay, so this message of my title tonight, uh, I love this title because this, this is what came to me. My title tonight, four words, it, from strength to strength. Amen. I'll say it again, from strength wow. to strength. Wow. There could be another level of strength, okay? Amen. So no matter where you are, God's going to beat you. Wherever you are, He's going to take you a whole new ground. So it's never like you get Amen. saved and then you sit there born, dead, frustrated, unfulfilled, dissatisfied until the day you die. No, there's, there's, a, there's a growing and we're going to see that here a little bit. Can we see something right here? Until you are increased, and you, the word increase there means until you become fruitful and yeah. until you grow. Amen. Okay, you're going you're gonna to see two people come in the church, sit side by side. One will grow and the other one doesn't grow. Yeah. See, they're both at the same yes. same church service, same same time. One grows and one doesn't grow, and there's reasons for that. So we really need an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying, and because God is going to give us the word, and the word is going to be an assignment yes. that He wants yes. to know. Will I come into alignment with the assignment? Yes. That's the one who grows yes. and becomes alive. Yes. Okay, so, so until you increase, until you become fruitful, until you begin to grow, and then you will inherit the land, which means then you will occupy and you will possess what the promises that God had given to you. Okay, now let's go to what I really want to say that's going to really make help you understand what I'm what I'm trying to say in this message. Turn to please, Second Corinthians chapter one. Second Corinthians chapter one. And that's going to be very practical. Second mm. Corinthians chapter 1, we we'll begin the verse 2, and this is uh, uh, Paul the Apostle writing, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort. Mm. Now let me just say this so, about, so that that's sometimes awesome. when things come up it might fit better later on in the message, but the Bible says, and I think it's in John chapter 14, that the Holy Spirit is a comforter. Yes. Okay, so he says right there, the God of all comfort. And if anybody learned, if anybody learned how to go to God and be comforted, it was Paul the Apostle. Amen. All that he went through, okay? Yes. But let me just say that, that 
when, when, when one little thing goes wrong, whether it be a flat tire, whether, whether you go to the restaurant and, they, and you tell them you want, you want mayo, but they give you a miracle whip instead of mayo, <laughs> we're not going to become a serial killer because someone gave us a miracle whip instead of mayo. Okay, so there are people that as soon as one little thing goes wrong, they go back to their sin because they're not ready. Okay, here's what God's going to do. God will allow something to happen because he's looking for people that he can promote. But he wants to know, can he trust me? Okay? Can God trust me with trouble? Amen. So something will go wrong, and then God will watch how we handle that. Yeah. Because uh, if, when you do it, the closer you get to Gethsemane, the more the things are going to happen, and the fewer people will go with you. Yeah. So the point that I want to make is, if the Holy Spirit is a comforter, when we learn to go to God for comfort, rather than alcohol and drugs and sex out of wedlock, partying and gamble, whatever the whatever your thing was, whenever, see, God is looking for people that He can promote. So many times He will take. If God tells you and I to try the Spirit, I promise you, He will try all of our spirits. Yes. Yes. Hey, if He tells us to do, if you're in leadership, you got to try the spirits. And I, I found a good way to try the spirits. One of them anyway, don't let someone do what they want to do. Mm. Amen. If they become like a hungry alligator and begin chewing on me, I know they're not ready. <laughs> but God knows how to test me. Yes. And I begin chewing on God that He knows I'm not ready. Yes. Come on, saints of God. Yes. That's a, a double-edged sword, okay? So we're the, the God of all comfort. So that this is what God's looking for. He's looking for people that He can trust with trouble. They, they, the, the trial of their faith is going to be, going to be made strong. Okay, remember that we're talking about from strength to strength. Okay, so here's, your, here's where if a, if a demon spirit the, the size of a net attacks you, and you win the fight. Can you imagine Derek back there making big, big strong yeah. Derek is going him and the, him and the net, him and the dog. If you win the fight with a demon the size of a net, your reward will be the net will retreat, there'll be peace for him. Then a little bit of time will go by, then a demon the size of a fly will come. You defeat that demon, there'll be peace for a little bit, and the devil will regroup, and here will come a demon the size of a bumblebee. And everything that you defeat, then the devil will regroup, come at you from another angle, and the power will then the sparrow. And the size of an eagle. And keeps getting bigger and bigger. So the point is, until I am increased, see, if, yeah. if, if a demon the size of a gnat or fly just flies by me and says, you're depressed, stay home, go, go, go to your secret seat, and I throw in the towel, and I obey what the devil says we do, then I'm, I'm so far from being ready for what God has for me to do. He's looking for people he can promote. Yes. We're talking about a the church here, okay? From strength to strength. Okay, so if you pass the test of a demon the, of a, the size of a net or a fly, then you, your reward will be a, a bigger demon will come back against you. And uh, I think Joyce Meyer made that, that same real popular uh, new level, new devil. And you'll find, that, you'll find that to be quite true. New, le new level, new devil. So Paul here yeah. is speaking to the Corinthian church and he said, the, the, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our tribulation. Yes, he does. Many people will tell you that if you have tribulation because you don't have faith, and I believe the more faith you have, the more tribulation that you have. Oh, yes. Right? yes. <laughs> if, if I read my Bible right, Jesus had quite a bit of tribulation. Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere he goes, people try to kill him. That trouble to me. Yes. Yes. Well, the apostle had faith. There was in yeah. a lot of trouble. He woke, now, the point we need to understand God will comfort us in our tribulation. Yeah. Yeah. You are not protected. There will be days of tribulation. Amen. And what I'm saying, and what I'm saying is that I'm going to go ahead and say this because that's about the third time it comes to me. In in Romans chapter five, it said then, uh, we glory in tribulation. Yes, that's amazing. Uh, in the beginning, you may you may not be there. The, you have to be close to God, the glory of tribulation. Yeah. And you understand tribulation then, and, and the Romans chapter 5 said, tribulation then worketh perseverance. Mm -hmm. God looking for people that will persevere, that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that will with glory in tribulation. One thing goes wrong, well, they don't begin cursing, they don't flesh out, they don't go, go back to the secret scene, they don't become angry at God, they don't fall in the church, they don't, they don't go back to the world. They, they will glory in tribulation, Amen. tribulation worth per perseverance, comma. Yeah. Yes. Perseverance yes. results in proven yes. character. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, that's what he's looking for in the pulpit. Yes. Yes. That's what he's looking in the church. He's looking for proven character. Yes. 
and proven character results in hope. Yes. And hope makes one not to be ashamed. Amen. And you go down to verse 6, and it's very important, in Romans 5 and verse 6, it says then, that uh, while we were ungodly and without strength, yes. Christ died for the ungodly. Thank you, God. While we were yet ungodly and yes. without strength, yes, Christ died for the ungodly. Oh, so He yes. died for the ungodly us, Yes. To give us strength. Mm. Oh, yes. Come on, faith of God. Yes. Now let me let me couple it just in Proverbs chapter oh. not Proverbs, in First Corinthians chapter one said this Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty are called. I have called the foolish things of this world. Yes. I, I have chosen I the weak yes, the weak things of this world to oh. confound the wise that men would not trust in the wisdom of men. In other words, there are going to be things that education not going to carry you. No. Amen. Now, we're, right. now we're talking about two different realms now, okay? Don't think that I'm talking about education. Uh, I, well, I'm talking about education in, in the natural. Is You want to get an education of the natural. But when I'm saying education of the natural is different than in the spirit. Yeah. In the spirit is by the spirit of this. Not by mind, not by power, but by my spirit. Yeah. Okay, so we don't bring... The education of the world into the church, you think, because because I learned all this, I had this head knowledge, but see, it's a, it's by it's about a relationship with God. Yes. Okay, so not many white, not many noble, not many uh, mighty are called. I call the foolish things of the world. I call the weak things of the world. That men would not trust in the wisdom of men, but they would trust in the power and in the demonstration of the Spirit of the living God. Okay, so we're talking about from one strength to another strength. Who does God choose? We people. Yeah, yes. The bigger the fool that you were from the devil, the more you qualify for God. I mean, that's just what I'm saying. Because see, you know, and you're gonna, you will find out that God isn't looking for leaders at Harvard and Yale. Amen. Look, yeah. I'm serious. I'm serious, Angel God. That He has chosen so that what I'm saying is, He'll find someone that has no concept of, of the of the saint that will be at not only zero but, but below zero yeah. and so so God will say I'm gonna come to this person and and they will know they got the trust on me. Yeah. They've got the trust in God. Yeah. And none yeah. in their education, none in their personality, yeah. none in their work, none in their clothes, none in their head knowledge. Oh, yeah. Come on, saints of God. Yeah. But in the power oh, and in the yeah. demonstration of the Spirit of the living God. Yeah. What they will realize is the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that dwells in them, and is quickened and made us alive, oh, yeah. made our mortal bodies alive. Yeah. Come on, give God a praise. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter one here. The God, so awesome. the verse four, who covers us in the tribulation yes. that we may be able. Yes, yes. That we may be able yes. to comfort them that are in any trouble. Yes. Now what I'm saying is that no. the true greatest commandment, when we have the strength to obey, the true greatest commandment oh. to love God with all of our heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love our neighbors ourselves, yes. you're going to God is looking for people that He can trust or tell that will be faithful because they love God, they love other people. Yes. Yes. If someone doesn't care about other people, they just flesh out when they go wrong. Yes. They just flesh out. Because they don't care what other people think yes. about them. They don't care what God thinks about them. Mm. There's no fear of God. So they just flesh out and because there's no concept of God because it's all about them. So we're talking about changing from the flesh power to spirit power. Yes. Yes. Here's what Jesus said. The flesh profits nothing. It's the spirit. It's the spirit that quickens. Okay, so the flesh power that accomplishes nothing. The flesh profits nothing. But the spirit of God quickens. Here's what Jesus said. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. I've done so you can, oh, you can hear some of them, the noise they get to be, the words, imagine hearing Jesus speak in the words of life wow. coming forth yes. from him. Yes. Okay, that we may be able to comfort them that are in any trouble. Yes, okay, you will go through something, 
and the God of all comfort will comfort you. Yes. Yes. Now what you now you have a life message, yes. and the life message that you now have is not doctrine, is not teaching, no. is not theory. This is experiential. Yes. You go through something, Amen. and now you're going to miss it. Yes. You went through the fiery burn. You yes. went through the lion's yes. yes. You crossed the desert for yourself. Yes. You went through the war. Yes. You went through this. You went through that. Yes. You went through cancer. You went through these different things, and now you came out with more than what you had when you went into it. Now that's from strength to strength. That's what we're talking about. Okay. In case you wait, when we understand that God of all covers, who covered us, and now God's going to use you to cover them, the people, by the covering wherein we ourselves are comforted by God. Verse 5. Amen. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us. Yes, they do. Yes. Now here's, here's this. In America, this is about the extent of the suffering that we'll go through. Sometimes we just don't get our way. <laughs> yeah. So true. Right. Oh, That's Lord. real. Yeah. 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 Just, just this week, you all, you all know very well. I don't like, I don't, I get, I do that. I understand that they're the weight upon the Lord to renew the strength. I understand that. I just don't wait real well with grocery stores. <laughs> I do not like long lines. So I pray before I get in line. So I went to Sam's wholesale. There's only three cashiers and three long lines. <laughs> And I get in the middle line, and one person in front of me is there for 25 minutes arguing with the cashier. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Come on. That's the other person. That's, that's about the extent of suffering in America. Yeah. In other words, that's a affliction. And so then I've got to watch my attitude. I've got to, watch, I've got to focus. I had, I had to fight off thoughts to choke in that parody. <laughs> Okay, so as the summary of the Christ abound in us and the consolation, and then it's very important we understand. We really need to understand that there's that when when you become awakened and you become enlightened, and the light of God begins to shine in our darkness, we begin to realize other people watching us. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, for a long time people didn't want what I had because they really didn't have anything. <laughs> That would attract other people. Right. All I had was good theory, good doctrine, <laughs> but it wasn't real to me because I could talk it, but I wasn't walking it. Right. Yeah. So when I began to realize, when I got sick and tired of being sick and tired, when I got sick and tired of circling the same amount of yeah. I got sick of the scenery, I thought, I got to change. Amen. I ran out of people to blame. Amen. And I stopped playing the role of the victim. <laughs> and I got up from there. Yes. Okay, he says, so the yeah, yeah. Runs about the about the about the crime, whether we afflicted, verse 6, whether we are afflicted is for your consolation and your salvation. Yes. Okay, so there's a for others. Through yeah. through my bondage, you begin there you are going to go through things. And you're not going to well, let me you know, use yourself. I went through things I didn't understand what I was going through, and I didn't understand why. But back in the eighties when I passed to this country church, then all these things began to rise up within me and the, the the problem was I need a whole lot of deliverance. Now, I wasn't trying to start a deliverance ministry. I, I was trying to, what is wrong with me? And so, when I began to, to, to try to get myself cleansed and purged and, and get ready, get right with God, then I went through all this deliverance. And what came out of that was a deliverance ministry. What I'm telling you, you can go through something right now, and further on down the trail, what God, what was came forth from you, what was birthed in you, what God did within you, yeah. now it becomes experiential, it becomes something yeah. of great value yeah. to the body of Christ yeah. that you're, you're gifting oh, and you're anointing yeah. would be totally different yeah. than what yeah. mine or someone else yeah. might be. Yeah. But everybody has something. Yes. So that God will work and work within you and then He will release it, okay? Now, verse 7 yeah. And the hope of you was steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the suffering. The word suffering, they're just being hardships, they mean pain, means affliction, it means evil, uh, evil emotion or passion. Things just go wrong. Okay, so whenever then, so when we're willing to be partakers of the suffering, so that we, that we also shall be of the consolation, which means that God will comfort us and God will bring exhortation to us. Yes, so sometimes we've got to go through something 
If you're going to something, you'll have to go through something to get what you're going to. Yes. And that's what we need to understand. That's the purpose of the wilderness. That's the desert time. That's yes. the holy prophets oh, are cleansed yes. and purged and prepared for God's holy purpose. Yes. That's the people that come out with the light message of the other end. And when they open up your mouth, yes. you hear God through them. Yes. That's the person. Okay, now. Thank you, Jesus. Now, verse 8. Now, I'm getting to what I really want to say that's going to make more sense to you. you know, my title, From Strength to Strength. Verse 8, for we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble. No. See, don't try to pretend if you got trouble. No. It's not a negative confession to say you have trouble. Amen. Come That's on, right. the Holy Spirit, all Scripture is inspired by God. Amen. The Holy Spirit says, we have trouble. Yes. We want That's you to know the trouble. Yes. Is that trouble because we made negative confession? No. Is that your light begin to shine? Darkness trying to put out your light. Amen. Now, what I'm going to say right now is introduction. Everything basically up to this point is, is an introduction what I really want to say. Because God wants to do something. He wants to He wants to impart something tonight. He wants to put the fight within us. He wants us to get our song back. He wants to anoint thing. You're going to get your vision back. There's going to be impartation. There's going to be release tonight. We would not have you in your brother of our trouble that came to us in Asia. Now, I want you to see what trouble came to give them. We were pressed out of measure above strength. Now, uh, I'm just going to be real honest with you, okay? I, I went through years of, of a lot of trouble. I went through a, a years of cleansing and purging and sanctification and washing and being prepared and being stripped and being prepared. By the, I went through a whole lot of different things. And there, there would be times that the purging and the cleansing, and there would be times I would just be upon my face before God, and I went through such trouble, many yeah. because I'm so full of self, and because I was so demonized, and I didn't know how to deal with so many things that were coming against me. I'm telling you, I've been so low that all I could do was lay upon the floor and say, Help. Yes. Mm -hmm. I could not say help in Jesus' name. Yes. I could Amen. just mutter out yeah. help. That's right. Now maybe none of you have ever been oh, there. Yes. I've been there. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. I've been so down yeah. or so long it looked like up to me. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing that I would not do, the thing I would not do was throw in the towel. Amen. I would not right. compromise. Amen. God saw something. Yes. God saw something and I'd say, yes. You're going to oh. something, and if you're going to something, you will have yes. to go through something yes. to get to something. Oh, and yeah. I'm telling you. Can God trust me with trouble? Yes. So He's looking for people that He can promote, that He can know the pressure, that He can put His spirit upon. Wow. I'm telling you, the desert is between Egypt and the Promised Land. Yes. By divine design, yes. He's looking for people that will not go in the town. Yes. If something yes. goes wrong, they're not going to mess with themselves up. And there are people go in the town yes. and quit. Yes. Go back yes. to the thinking yes. God is born again. Yes. They're going to pull up their yes. boots up and put, yes. put on the garment of praise. Yes. They're going to put the fight with them. In 2 Corinthians 1 verse 8, now we were pressed out of measure above strength. Now, you've been nowhere until you've been through something that what you're in the lion's den with is bigger and stronger than you. And if God doesn't come through, if God doesn't come through, I'm telling you, God has strange methods. God has, he has methods of getting you to a place that uh, if your prayer life dries up, God can create circumstances to help you redevelop your prayer life. I'm losing the spirit of prayer, but i got to get this back. I'm praying, but I'm not where I was. I said, i got to get this back real quick. Hallelujah. Either either this thing going to kill me or I'm going to kill it. That's right. Come on, come on, I'll there. I'm saying, just beyond measure, above strength, something that was bigger and stronger than me came against me. I did not know how to deal with it, so I had to pray. Yes, that's right. There are certain things that happen within your life that you become suddenly if you're if you're reading the Bible, if your Bible reading has become dried up or you just go through the motion, soon there will be circumstances coming in your life. You will be you your nose will be in the book. Amen. <laughs> There'll be nothing of the time. Suddenly suddenly there'll be a revival of prayer. There'll be a revival of prayer. A Bible reading. 
Nobody has to talk you into coming to the church. You can't wait for the door to open because then your judgment. Either this thing is going to take you under or you're going to kill it. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Okay. So Paul here, speaking under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we've pressed on the measure above strength. Now listen to what he says. In so much that we despair of life. You know what he's saying? Yes. I thought I was going to die. Yep. I thought I was going to die. Amen. You ever been you ever been to the place? Yes. You thought, oh man, I'm not, I'm not very old, but my heart, I feel like my heart is going to explode yes. out of my chest. Yes. Mm. The stress, the pressure. Yes. Mm. See, God is looking for people who can trust their trouble. There's going to be a place, and this is basically what I'm trying to say today, is that there's ways that God will bring us into a place that we will stop acting independent of God and become dependent upon God. Yes. We yes. will be in circumstances and situations if God doesn't come through, I'm going under. So suddenly you'll find yourself seeking you first the kingdom of God. We heard that message. We heard that scripture for years and didn't obey it. But suddenly circumstances and situations arose. I've got to seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then these saints were added to me. When we cool off a little bit, we begin seeking these things. Yeah. We leave out the seeking you first the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. And we leave out uh, his, and his righteousness. He says that these things will be in. If we start seeking those things before God, Amen. we're out of divine order. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now hang on because we're going somewhere. They're going to make sense to you. Because I, I believe that there's multiple people here that different things have been coming against you. And what I'm saying is, God has strange ways of bringing promotion. Yes. Amen. Amen. Strange Amen. ways. Lion stands, yes. fiery furnaces, <laughs> wilderness wanderings. Right, yeah. mm. Strange. He's a God of method. He has method. Amen. So he says, we were pressed out of measure above strength. It's about, we despaired even of life. Wow. But, we, but we had the sense of death in ourselves. Wow. They wanted to kill him. The sentence of death was within himself. Now listen to what he said. And this, this is a lot. This is basically my theme here tonight. That we should not trust in ourselves, but in God. Amen. See, there are circumstances and situation that the Spirit of God will bring in. Let, let me put it this way, okay? Uh, you know, this, this may not make sense to you, but that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God. I want you to just stop and think about so there's time we got to fight the fight of faith. Yes. Yes. There, you know, I used that illustration recently about the, the little baby chick in the egg. If the little baby chick doesn't pick its way out of the egg, it dies within the egg. Right. Mm-hmm. And what happens is when it begins to pick its way out, it becomes it gets stronger and it gets stronger. Yes. And the more it fights the, and the more mm-hmm. it pecks, the stronger it becomes until it breaks the wow. egg. If he doesn't break the egg, the egg kills him. Amen. Wow. There will be circumstances, situations, that we get to pray ourselves out of. Yeah. We got to get in the work to get the yeah. bread of what the heaven of yeah. the heaven to find strength. Yeah. There's yeah. The, we got we be in a spiritual desert, we got to learn how to drink deeply. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so in Luke chapter four, verse one, don't turn to it, but let me just say that Luke chapter four, verse one, Jesus was led by the Spirit, capital F. He was led by the Spirit of God to the desert, yeah. which means a desolate a desolate, barren, unfruitful place. Yes. There'll be seasons in your life that are dry. Yes. Yeah. Yes. True. Can God trust you with trouble? Yeah. Can God trust me with desert time? Yes. Wow. That's good. Come on, Saints of God. Yeah. See, in the beginning, in the beginning, we think, oh, well, we're operating on emotion and feelings. Yes. Later on, we got to operate with yeah. faith and obedience. Yeah. You will be as faithful. You are and you are secure yeah, with God, but you don't feel His presence yeah. when you're in the desert or right by the river. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. God. Yeah. And see, God, He's what? Can I trust You with trouble? Can I trust You with desert time? Can and I? What will happen when things go wrong within my life? Will I go back? Will I flash out? Go back to my sin? Or can? Or if, will it be another trip around the land? Or am I ready? God looking for people that He can promote. So before Jesus begins this ministry, 
Before he sends in the synagogue, he said, The Spirit of God's upon me! Before that, we like verse 18 in Luke 4. Spirit of God's upon me! They heal the broken heart! The opening of prison did their bound! The recovery of the But before that, yeah. claim this one. Jesus was led by the Spirit, capital S, into the desert, mm. into the wilderness, to be tried, to be tempted, yes. and tested for 40 days. Mm. Yeah. And the devil stands back and waits so he's vulnerable. Yeah. Mm. He waits until starvation literally sets in. Mm. And then hell shows up and tempts him mm. with what I call homemade bread. If you ever smelled homemade <laughs> bread, you'd bake. You could just come from yeah. a smorgasbord, smell homemade bread, get hungry again. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And, the devil, and the devil tempted him. Now, this is very important we understand this. Because before Jesus stands in the synagogue, before he, he comes out with his public ministry, mm. he has to pass this test with no crowd around him. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's one thing. See, God's not impressed how I behave no. in here in front of you. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Who am I when you're not around? Yes. Amen. See, who are we when Amen. no one but God's watching Yes. What's on our little electronic devices and mm -hmm. right. what's Amen. going on in my little mind up there? Right. Mm -hmm. What am I entertaining in my heart? Mm -hmm. And what thoughts am I pondering on? And yeah. what desires am I allowing to arise that I'm yeah. entertaining yeah. within me? Yeah. There's where God wants to know Amen. who am I yes. when no one else is around. Yes. Can I trust you with trouble? So then Jesus is led by the Spirit, capital S, into the wilderness, a desolate, unfruitful, barren place, and hell shows up and begins to tempt and begin to test Jesus. Mm -hmm. And every time that hell came against him, what did Jesus do? Spoke the word. Spoke the word. Spoke the word. Now what I'm saying is, mm -hmm. when strong temptation and trials and tribulation comes against us, if we murmur, if we gripe, if we bellyache, we become angry at God, we become angry at the church. Mm. If we curse mm. the paint off of the wall, mm. I'm not ready. Amen. Mm. Come on, say yes. Yes. <clears throat> Squeeze a lemon, you get lemon juice. Squeeze an orange, you get orange juice. When I'm squeezed, what comes out of me? Paul had been squeezed so many times, he said, yes. I have worked to glory in the glory in, wow. in yes. tribulation. Because tribulation results in perseverance. Perseverance results in proven character that will bring hope, and hope makes you not to be ashamed. Yes. Come on, saints of God. I'm telling you, I'm to look at our people that will persevere. Rainy day, sunny day, cloudy day, cold day, hot day, any day, they're going to be found faithful because any day is God's day. Come on, somebody get that to pray. God is looking for people that doesn't have to come to church and have church. Amen. That knows how to have church out there. They have church out there. They can't wait to get to church out here. Hallelujah. Amen. We have the sins of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God. I'm saying the natural man disdains it. Yes. I'm saying there's certain things that we don't understand how God thoughts it. He's working for people to promote and go for Jesus. Because stayed in the synagogue and Luke chapter 14 and say the Spirit of God to put me, the yes. preach the gospel to the poor. He had to be tested. Yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. Now when? When he spoke the word, well, that'll make the devil mad. Yes. Every time the devil tried to bring Jesus down, Jesus spoke the word until said Satan departed from him for a season. Yes. yes. Now what I'm going to say right now to me is one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible. The, uh, if someone were to ask me what's your favorite scripture, I don't have a favorite scripture. But my life is Luke chapter 4. It's my favorite chapter in the Bible because it's basically my life and ministry. Amen. When Jesus speaks the word and so when the thoughts come <laughs> And the desires come, and the oppression comes, and the persecution comes, 
and lies comes, and all kind of thing, every direction with hell itself is coming against you to the place. That, that's what Paul said. This thing that came against us was bigger than us and it was stronger than us. Yeah. Mm. We, we had the, the sentence of death within us, so this thing would try to kill us. Yes. And, and so that we had to come, we could not trust in ourselves. Mm. That's right, man. Praise God. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, powerful, strong as God. It took him decades to get me out of that. <clears throat> Trusting in self. But the important thing that I want to say is that God is looking for people that it can promote. And what I'm saying is when the thoughts come, if you stop it at the point of a thought, Amen. then it doesn't become a desire. Yeah. Once it becomes the desire, the devil will try to put some fuel upon it. Yes. And he tries to get you to speak it, to entertain it in your heart what it would feel like to do that thing. Uh -huh. And the next thing you know, you've committed adultery or fornication or something in your heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. For a man to look upon a woman, the last time he has committed what way? Adultery. Now, what I'm saying is, you have to <coughs> really want fullness of yes. God. Yes. To allow God to cleanse and purge your mind and your heart, mm -hmm. your thought life. If you really don't want to go on with God, you allow the dirt. Yes. You entertain it. What I'm saying is that Jesus loved God and loved yes. people so much that he was willing. Remember this right here, Paul said? The God of all comfort will comfort you that you could help other people. Yes. Mm. Jesus is being tested. Hell's trying to bring him down. And Jesus is going to pass this test because he realizes in verse 18 he's going to be standing, if he passes this test, he's going to stand in the synagogue. His public ministry is going to begin. If he flunks this test, Amen. Take it again. What, what I'm saying is is that you and I, well, let me, let me back up to what I said much earlier. That when we started with Exodus chapter 23, verses 28 29, until you are increased. The deception is someone who's been in church 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. They think, I, you know, I've been I've been in church for 35 years. God, you need to, you you owe it to me to do something for me. See, we've gone back into the mentality of works. God, you owe me. That's works. Yes. God doesn't owe us. It's not what we have done. It's what He has done. Amen. So, so what I'm saying That's is, true. until you're angry, so it's now how long we've been in church. Yes. It's how obedient have I been. Yes. When God gives me a word, and the word there's an assignment, do I come into alignment, or do I just say amen? Do I spring from the chandeliers <laughs> in here? <coughs> but I'm doing some real bad stuff out there. <coughs> what I'm saying is, when we come to the place that we love God, we love other people, yes. that we will be obedient like Jesus. No. We will pass that test. Yeah. And before you get to, the, to Luke uh, 4.18, you look at verse 14, it says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. The Spirit. Yes. Yes. Now, the, my definition of that scripture is the anointing of God increased. Yes. Mm. Amen. Praise upon God. Yes. What I'm saying is faith. Hallelujah. It's just like exercising your body. Amen. If temptation comes, if a demon the size of a gnat comes and says, Do ABC, and I, I go, Yes, sir, I do it. And I go, Do ABC, I'm not ready. When I exercise my faith, you become stronger when you say no to temptation. Amen. Mm. Yes, Lord. See, we under if if I work this right arm, if every day I pump the say one, two, three hundred times, I would build up my. But if I never exercise my left arm, Amen. I'd have one big arm and one and one arm. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, I'm saying that things will come against us. God is looking for people that he can promote. Can God trust me with trouble? Yes. And what I'm saying is there's a place in God until you are increased. Yes. That we gotta be very careful thinking, you know, <clears throat> it's uh, you know, I came to church, you know, it's cold outside and you know, God, you ought to really do something for me. And but ignore him during prayer, ignore him during praise, ignore him during worship, not respond to God. The word being preached to me, but I don't I daydream to space out, think about the honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. So, yeah, I'm glad you don't know what I'm talking about more. You know what I'm talking about. Come on. Yes, yes. We had the sense of death that we shouldn't have trusted ourselves, but in God, look at verse 10, who had delivered us Amen. 
who has delivered us from such great a death and and doth deliver us and whom we will trust that he will yet deliver us. When you when you go through storm A, you'd rather not go through storm A, but what happens is Satan regroups and the next thing you know, storm B comes. You still would rather not go through storm B, but now you work. Well if I got through A you give it to me. Yes. Yes. And then you find out storm B, the next thing you know, a, a, a season of peace comes, and another storm comes, yep. and the next thing, well, you think, I, I don't want to have to deal with it, but I got to deal with it. Yes. God brought me through storm A, God brought me through storm B, now he'll give me through storm C. Yes. So you heard from this, Good. that you will grow, you will grow by fighting, submitting to God, resisting the devil, Amen. and he yes. will flee from you. Yes. Okay, now. Thank you, Lord. To say what I really want to say, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I, I'm just going to, can I be honest with you? I'm making myself happy. Amen. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Mm-hmm. See, we're getting more people living. People got problems. Yes. Things come against yes. people. Yes. Every day down there was hunky dory. Yep. Yep. I don't know if it's cool hunky dory days. Yep. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let me, let me just say this for sports. I got a comment back there in the back row. He, he understands boxing. You, 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 you can climb in the ring with it. Boxing is so like Christianity. It's yeah, like either either you're going to have the good or the, the guy going to knock you out. Yeah. Mm. Come on, say to God. You climb in the ring with Smoke and Joe Fraser, you better be in shape. Yeah. yeah. Sam Duncan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, see, who am I when there's two. Me and the devil, Jesus there in the desert time, in Luke chapter 4, what happens when it's just me and what do I have with God? Amen. Because the devil wants to mock us. Yes. Let's say an illustration. Someone, Someone comes to church and someone either gets saved or somebody has a breakthrough. And the hordes of hell, they run. They run to where the devil is. The demons run to where the devil is. Says, oh, so and so got saved. So and so got loose. Somebody got delivered. Somebody got a big healing. Yeah. Oh, what, what, what shall, what shall, shall we send the hordes of hell against yeah. it to, to destroy them? Yes. No, no, no. The devil, the devil's there with all his pornography. You know, mm-hmm. like the Playboy Club. He, he's got all this stuff going. So the devil says, no, no, no. Just send a demon the size of a gnat mm-hmm. because he's been to the altar 27 times before. No, just send a demon the size of a gnat and whisper in his ear. Wow. He'll throw in the towel. The devil's looking for people to mock. Yeah. And ridicule. Yeah, so. Who am I? Amen. How much do I really have when I climb in the ring? When Muhammad Ali and Spoken Joe Frazier climbing in the ring, it's on. Yeah. Well, it's on. Go be some sweat. Yeah. You see what I'm telling you? One little whip, sissy pansy temptation. And we give up our inheritance, God's purpose, our plan, His yeah. destiny for Are you kidding me? Give up God's vision for what? A demon the size of a man? No. Come on, sister. No. For some whim, since it pays in sin, we're not going down. Yeah. I'm saying to God looking for people yeah. to promote yeah. the promotion yeah. that they come with our passion yeah. and tent. Yeah. And God yeah. looking for a church and for the church yeah. that will offer the sacrifice of righteousness. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yes. For real. Did I say 2 Corinthians 12? Yeah. yeah. 2 Corinthians, all right. 2 Corinthians 12. Verse 9. He said to me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Yes. My strength is sufficient. Yes. Does it say my strength was born? My strength is made. He's made. My strength is made in fiery furnaces, lions, dead, wilderness, one. My strength is made. My strength is made perfect. The word perfect then, my strength is made complete, finished, fulfilled, accomplished, consecrated. My my strength is made perfect in weakness. Oh, can I, can I find anybody with a weakness? Can I find anybody with a fault? Because that is not, not many mighty, not many noble have been called. I'm causing the foolish thing, the weak. The weak. I'm, I'm looking for weak people that can show my strength in. Yeah. 
Amen. Oh! Hallelujah. Her birth mama took her to the hospital, left her. And the birth, her birth certificate says, unnamed. So she had a number. Wow. She, she thought she was raised by her parents. And when she got to a certain age, then she found out her, who she thought was her birth parents had adopted her and her brother. So, so basically, and then she had been sexually violated, sexually abused by multiple men for multiple years. Mm -hmm. And this is the way she puts it, she puts it that, that she had so much abuse, so, much, so many things wrong within her life, that the government would have given her so much money to remain a victim. Wow. And she has a way of communicating this that she decided, awesome. my God is bigger than me living as a victim yeah. and collecting money from the government. She, she said she qualified for so many different programs, she would have never had to work. But she realized, here she was, she, her bristle came and says, unnamed. And there's a certain number, she got the number memorized. All she was, all she was to society was a number. That to, to ever mention, but just someone to abuse, yeah. someone to take advantage of. And one day she accidentally and finds out that, oh. she, that the the, bomb, the pre people she thought was her mom and dad wasn't her mom and dad. That she was adopted. She had no identity. Yeah. Wow. She had no identity wow. and finds her identity yeah. and Father yeah. God. Yeah. And the yeah. and the yeah. and the yeah. Come on, Father God. Yeah. What happened? She got up from there. Yeah. Get up from there! Yes. In the name of Jesus! Yes. Right, yes. Yes. You're not a victim! Yes. Yes. So Father God will give you what yes. he's looking for weak people! No, my strength is made. Yes. Mm. Could you mean they weren't born with all this? I thought I'm born with all the trouble, all the weak, all the father. No, my strength is made. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11 34 said, Out of weakness, they, were they weren't made from. They were not born from. They were made from. Yes. How were they were made from. How were they made from? By handling temptation yes. and adversity. Yes. Problems. Yes. By seeking God. By reading the word. Yes. Seeking himself. Yes. Heavenly yes. manner. By drinking deeply yes. of the living water. Yes. Come on. Yes. Some of you need God to be. Yes. If they yes. take yes. them yes. something yes. they can clean yes. them yes. 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 Get up from there. Yes. Yes, Lord. It's a strength. My strength awesome. is made. Perfect. It's weakness, which means this. The word weakness means feebleness, frailty. Those that are diseased, those that have infirmities. Wow. That's awesome. My God, my God. That's awesome. It's Not many white, not many noble, not many like you called, I call the foolish and the weak thing to compel the one that can put that cup in the wisdom of it, but in the power, the demonstration of the Spirit of the living God. Here's what we got to get away from. we got to get away from every word and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Come on, somebody. Get that to pray. Get ready, get ready. Today. Okay. My strength is sufficient for thee. My strength is made. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will glory. I will glory in, not for. I will glory in my infirmities. In other words, I'm not going to wait for the storm to pass. The saint to pray to read my Bible. The come to church. The storm may last for a while. I'm not going to wait for it to be in. I'm more in. I'm more in. I'm going to thank God for a problem. I'm not going to the problem. Is, I'm telling you, I'm not going to wait for this thing to, to pass. I'm going to end this. I'm going to more in tribulation. Because tribulation or persevere. God looking at my people. Now I'm persevere. Not looking for you. The sin. The fall away. To grow cold. God looking for people. Now I'm glad that I'm going to pray the price to live holy for God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Oh, yes. Amen. 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 Oh, yes. 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 Amen. Oh, Will God. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities. That I may glory in my infirmities. That the power of Christ would rest upon me. Now, anybody beside me ever wallowed in a little bed of self pity? Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Feel sorry for yourself. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my God, it's so pity that. Yeah. So we got a choice when we go through something. If you're going to something, mm -hmm. you're going to have to go through something. Mm -hmm. When they came out of Egypt, the promised land's over there, and in between is the desert. Mm -hmm. How we behave. In the desert mm. determines how long we will be in the desert. Amen. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Help us live. <laughs> Amen. That's real. Most, not all. Most died in the wilderness talking about, talking about, talking about landing wow. up with honey, but never getting there. Yes. As long as we just talk about it. Amen. And don't do what we need to do with the now. Yes. Ah, what will it cost me? What will it cost me to have God's future for me? Only your present. Yes. It's what we do in the present, in the now. Amen. Determines our future. Yes. If we're just yeah, waiting yeah. for something futuristic. Yes. Yeah, and crazy. we don't do what we need to do in the in the now. Ooh, Amen. Yeah. What will what will it cost me for my future, my right. present? Yes. Come on, Amen. Mm. I will glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Yeah, when, Lord. when, with all seriousness. This is what kept me for 40 years. No drinking, no drugging, no fornication, no sex out of wedlock for 40 years. Because I got this, because this is better than that. If you don't get this, see, if you'd rather waller, if you'd rather waller than immorality, then have the Spirit of Christ rest upon you. If in His presence, Fullness of joy. If you're not in church, in His presence. Yeah. 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 If you could be in church and not have His presence. Yeah. 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 So what I'm saying is there are certain things that we can do. And I'm not going to have time to develop it, but there are certain things. Oh, my God. Uh, when the, <clears throat> Psalms 4 talked about praying yourself out of the pit. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Yes. There's no pit so deep you can't pray yourself out of. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There's times that you be so you feel so weak, you feel so oppressed. What am I going to do? And you, you open up your Bible and you just read a few scriptures Amen. and you become so strong. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> because it's Jesus. because it's uh -huh. that Yes. I want to uh the Bible says this in John four thirteen. If uh baby man drink of this water of the natural it would be thirst again, but if you drink of the water that I shall give you it shall become in you a well. Yes. What kept me for 40 years? Because there's a well of God. Yes. That I, I, I say to my, the Spirit over there, my spirit might spring up a well. Amen. Now, when you get to the place, so he says, if you drink of this water, you will, drink of the, you will be thirsty for that water. Mm -hmm. John 7, 37, 38 says, if any man thirst, Amen. all hell really needs to do to seduce us from fullness is take away our thirst. Yeah. Get us wrong appetites for the wrong thing, wrong appetites for the flesh, but then that right. of the spirit. Amen. Because he said, if any man thirst, yes. Jesus said, let him come unto me. Yes. Many times we get seduced, we become experts at coming to church, but ignoring <laughs> God. True. I've been there. Forgive I've us, been Lord. There. I'm not talking about you. Yeah. I'm telling you, I've been there. Yes, not just Lord. Lord. I'm in love with you. Sometimes I need a good Holy Ghost slap. Amen. Lord God. I'm serious. 
I'm not talking about anything about I'm talking about this. I need a spiritual son. God knows how to do it. Amen. If any man thirsts, Jesus said, let him come into me and drink. drink. Let him come into me and drink. 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 Now, if we are thirsty and we come to him to the place that we've got to drink, then there's a result. What's, what's the result? Oh, then out of your shall flow. When the river of God flows to you, that river is so powerful, yes. it will set you free from anything sexual, anything. Yes. Uh, and I'm telling you, I know what it's like to be under the influence of alcohol. I know what's, I know what it's like to be under the influence of the most powerful drug upon the face of the earth. I know what it's like. And what I'm saying, the river of God flowing through me was better than anything, yeah. anything yeah. drunk yeah. Oh, through my body. Yeah. Well, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And, and when you get this, this is better than that. Yes. In His presence, it's full of joy. Yes. Now, let me just say this, because this, this right here says it so well in this book called The Path. I mean, he gives us, uh, he gives us, tells this little story how, how uh, he said he's wandering in this wilderness and uh, he thought, I... I I thought, why did I even enter this wilderness? I've been, I, I've been shown great purpose on the other side. Now my whole purpose was to die. While I'm trying to go forward. It looks like I'm going to die. See, pressed on beyond that measure without, without that. And, and, and this would at least be some major victory against the wilderness. Now the wilderness seemed to be my doom. Just when I was sure that my next step would be my my last, I saw a faint sparkle through the fog ahead. I thought it must, I must have imagined that my mind was playing tricks upon me. I gathered all the resolve I had to, to, to stumble forward just a few more feet. Wow. I saw it again. It couldn't have been very far. I determined to reach what it was. And I emerged from the forest and I'm standing in front of a small lake. It was the most beautiful water that I've ever seen. It comes to, comes to the lake. The water said, I tried to kneel down to this water. I fell upon my face at the edge of the water. As thirsty as I was, I thought I was going to die. I just looked at it for a long, a long moment. The water seemed to be alive. Water being a type of the spirit. Mm, yes. Anybody drinking this water shall yes. become in him a well. I thought the water seemed to be alive. And, and uh, I... I thought, uh, well, is this come some kind of poison? Could this water kill me? And I thought, so I'm so I'm so thirsty. I'm, I'm about to die. So if I'm going to die, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to drink this. I'm going to drink this water. Still, I I, I dip the I dip my finger to the water and that touched it to my tongue. I it felt and tasted strange. It charged me with some kind of energy. It tasted so sweet. I felt energy. I drank more. The more I drank, the stronger I became. We're talking about our strength, the strength. What we don't want to do is stop growing. We don't want to stop changing. We don't want to stop drinking. We don't want to stop eating. We don't want to stop praying. We don't want to stop seeking God. We need more and more God. And so he goes on and he says, I kept drinking. But the more I drank, the stronger I felt. I kept drinking until I felt stronger than I ever had in my life. It was as if every cell in my body was being awakened just moments before. I felt like the worst I'd ever been. I thought I was going to die. Now I felt better. The best I've ever felt in my life. I went from the edge of being on of death to being more alive than I'd ever been. The water not only quenched my thirst, but my hunger as well. Amen. The mental clarity I felt from drinking this water was invigorating. Yes, and the energy I felt flowing through my body. Yes, drink it. If any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. We don't want to come to church and not drink. We don't want to pray and not drink. Yes. i never forget when we, we had the young people share it. And this young man over here, when I mean, he was sharing it, and there was a way that he said it. He was talking about the dancing he's. He said, how people will persecute us when we praise the way we worship. Mm -hmm. And he said, what they don't know, they don't know. That's how we drink. See, people don't understand our singing yes. is, is drinking. Yes. Our praise yes. is drinking. Yes. Our, our praising yes. is drinking. Yes. Our worshiping yes. is drinking. Yes. Our dancing yes. is drinking. Yes. The praise yes. we're yes. drinking. Yes. What are we doing? Yes. We're here. Yes. The heavenly yes. dinner. The prayer of us. We're going. We're changing. We're becoming Christ-like. A Christian is not someone that puts in his body in the church building. A Christian is someone who's received Christ and know Christ, and in Him is a well. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yes, Lord. Say something else here to me. So great. Thoughts will squish through me real quick. I gotta always be able to get back. While while I'm trying to pull back up, turn to Psalm 84. I want to show you something here. Drinking. Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Now just joy. Amen. Okay, I, I, I know when the revelation came back to me. Hallelujah. Uh, before we before we do the uh, Psalms, I'll we'll turn to Second Second Thessalonians chapter one. Second Thessalonians chapter one. Because I want to, I want to bring this in. The Holy Spirit brought this up. And mm-hmm. Now let me just, uh, let me tell you, we're going to have a different kind of ending here tonight. And what mm-hmm. we're going, what we're going to do at the end of this message mm-hmm. is that we're going to give everybody who wants to drink an opportunity <laughs> to. Drink. An opportunity to drink. drink okay? Amen. Okay. We got what we call big boy music. Um, Amen. Just a little bit. We're going to give everybody who wants you an opportunity yeah. to drink. Yes. What we what I want you to understand, whenever you whenever you get along with God and you pray, you are talking to God. Yes. Amen. God is watching us. Yes, Lord. When you read the word, when I, I don't read the word, I don't need to read the word to try to get a message to preach to someone else. I need God to preach to me. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> That's the whole thing I want to turn my title tonight from strength to strength. You're not going to stay who you are now. Mm-hmm. Whenever we stay in the same condition, we've, got, we've become barren and we've, we've lost momentum. And I want to prove that to you by the scripture. Okay. In 2 Th- Thessalonians chapter 1, beginning of verse 2. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is me, because your faith, because your faith groweth exceedingly. Not only is their faith growing, Paul said, your faith is not only growing, it's growing exceedingly. Yeah. Now, see, yes. that's what God's looking for. Yes. He's not looking. Oh. It doesn't make any difference. See, one person can come and be in church 20 years. Someone come in and be here two years. And the person two years outgrow the person being here 20 years. Because the person 20 years but never does. Oh. Amen. Well, no. Yes. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yes. Is that we've got to grow. Yes. Yes. There's a little angel, her little baby over there. They feed the little baby the milk, the milk of the word. Mm-hmm. And but the, one day that baby would be weaned from milk, and there'd be some baby food, there'd be some yeah. vegetables, yeah. and, and they keep going until it comes to the meat. And that's a picture of the spiritually yeah. that God wants to take it. We should always, always be growing. If I stop growing, that's what I will release in this church. If I if I stop being hungry, that's what I will release it to the church. If I stop being thirsty, that's what will be in my spirit, and I'll release it to the church. Come on, saints of God. What are you releasing to people that were around? I see, I see your faith is going. Not only is it going, it's going exceedingly. The word going to be, it's increasing. Yes, hallelujah. That's a good thing to see. Is my love Increasing. Yes. Yes, Lord. Amen. Still got a long way to go. Amen. My prayer life growing. My Bible really growing. My study. My hunger. My thirsting. My joy. My peace. My obedience. Is it growing or is it shrinking? Anybody beside me ever lied to yourself? Yep. <laughs> Paul said that your faith is growing exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all toward each other is abounding. Yes. 
Yes. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, you know how we can, that. you know, a little, uh, mm -hmm. little meter, meter mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. whenever we're not where I'm amuse myself when I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Anybody beside me ever heard of critical fault finding? Oh yeah. yeah. Thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we never quite rub it Fault finding. Judge, criticize. This is wrong. Yeah, I did. They did. Uh, everybody does things wrong yeah. except. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the danger. Yeah. Yeah. Warning. Yeah. 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 All right, let me do this, then we'll go to go Psalm 84 in that uh, moment. Yeah. We'll, we'll possibly change all the service. Verse, uh, the end of verse 3 says, That your faith is growing, you see the love of every one of you, and all is toward one that each other is abounding, That's so that awesome. we are self glory in you, in the churches of God, for your patience, and your faith in all of your persecutions, mm. and tribulation that you endure. See, there's the enduring, the going through. Yes. Uh, I could go on more there, but let's go to Psalm 84. We'll go ponder coming in from Andy. Prophetic, too much, you just tune in. And just listen, let me just share this, and then we're going to give a couple altar calls, and then we're going to, I'm going to put on, for those of you who've got the time in here, just stay. And we'll put some big boy music on. And we'll go ahead to church. If you want to drink, you'll be able to drink. Psalm 84, one of my favorite psalms. Psalm 84, how lovely are your tabernacles, O Lord. Know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? How lovely are your tabernacles, O Lord of hope. My soul longeth. That means I have desire. My soul longeth, yea, even fainted for the courts of the princes of God. My heart and my flesh, it cried out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow has found the house. The swallow has a nest for herself, wow. where she may lay her young, and even the others, O Lord, behold, my King and my God, blessed are they that dwell in your house, they will still be praising you, Selah. Yes, blessed is the man yeah. whose strength, yes. hmm. blessed is the man whose strength, my town tonight, from yes. strength to strength, yes. blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baca, which means weeping, mourning, bewailing, it means lamentation, who passing through a valley of tears. Yes. Mm. Amen, it season. is. Yep. Hard yep. season. Mm. During the glory of tribulation, yeah. tribulation work of perseverance, perseverance mm -hmm. results in proven character. Mm -hmm. When something goes wrong, we throw the found we flesh out, we sin, we're not ready. God looking for people no matter what comes against you. Yes. Oh, Did you notice in the Bible when Jesus was giving away free food, everybody get healed, everybody delivered, there were multitudes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The closer they got to Gethsemane, the crowds went down. Yes. Yes. And that's real. And the disciples fled from Gethsemane. Yes, How I can relate. I've fled from my Gethsemane mm -hmm. many times. And I'm yes. saying God's trying to get us to the cross to die to yourself, give up that control. There's a place, there's a change. For a long time, Jesus was my Savior. But in all honesty, He wasn't my Lord. Because mm -hmm. I was not willing to give up control mm -hmm. to threaten Him. <laughs> so God said, You're ABC, and I tell Him, Let me tell you, God, what we'll do X, Y, Z. And it was a power struggle between God and I. Mm -hmm. Guess who's more powerful? Amen. So, what I'm telling you, the, the love of God, if you, you pray certain prayers, God will let you make so many unwise, foolish decisions, and none of them will work out to bring you to a place. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think before I make major decisions, you know, I think I ought to pray. pray. Amen. Might ask your yeah. advice and your help and your counsel, God. <laughs> In the beginning, I didn't want his counsel advice because he might not let me be in control. Choir. Amen. But then, see, the, 
on the other side of Gethsemane is resurrection. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Yes. Take up his cross and come follow me. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Some cases don't go to hell. You just never get your inheritance. You never find out your purpose, your identity. You never enter in to what God really has for you because we never trust him enough to give him control. Okay, coming in for a landing. Verse 6, who passing through the valley of Baca, which means weeping, mourning, bewailing, lamentation means tears, make it a well. So if there are going to be some tears, I'm going to make, I'm going to make a well, and the rain will fill the pools. Now, verse 7, listen very closely. They go from strength to strength. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Um, in 1975, as the crow flies, three quarters of a mile on the other side of 635, I became a Christian. And within a couple months, it was about two or three months, I ended up in full-time ministry working for Teen Challenge. I remember coming to church <laughs> one time, and the pastor who I got saved under looked at me and he says, you are really growing fast. Amen. Well, he didn't know I was with Team Challenge. He didn't know I was on staff. I was the sister of Dean and Men. Mm. And so he didn't know what was going on in my life. But, you know, a church of 600 people, he couldn't, you know, he didn't know. He didn't know me from, from Adam. But he looked at me and he said, you are growing real fast. So what is That's nice. our life saying Amen. to other people? Amen. Amen. I ask myself, am I growing or am I shrinking? Amen. Am I increasing or am I decreasing? There's a thing about appetites, blessed are they that hunger yes. and thirst for righteousness. Mm. When we allow, we make choices, the enemy takes away our appetite for the things of God, and then the things of the world begin, we begin to hunger for them. Danger. Yes. Danger. Deal with it. Deal with it before you make decisions. There's a snare over there that will trap you for your life. Yeah. This right here says, they, grow, they go from strength to strength. Um, look at the two boys there. Yeah. They have a certain strength now, but they're going to become stronger. Amen. So in the natural, they're going to become every day a little bit stronger, a little bit bigger, more of the brain's going to develop. Yes. By the age of 21, 22, the brain will be fully developed. Mm. The last part of the brain to develop is, is the part that connects decision and consequences. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Yes. That's the truth. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Amen. You take these two boys, you can watch them grow. You can, you can look a little Natalie back there. And you, from the time that she came in the church, you can tell she's growing. Yeah. You can look. You don't need to get to the sermon to know her. You just look and you can tell mm -hmm. that she's growing. Amen. Mm -hmm. The young man over here, you tell, you saw, I, one day he's walking up the street. I thought, well, I, I think that's Samson. No, that's too tall for Samson. <laughs> All of a sudden I realize he's growing. Mm -hmm. There are people with discernment that can see. They will know, am I, am I alive or am I dead? Amen. Am I increasing or am I de decreasing? Did I once be in the flesh and get saved and in the spirit, but now I find myself back in the flesh? Amen. It's frightening. It's frightening how fast I could shift. Oh, Lord. You ever had the spirit of prayer? I mean, you are a dick. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got the day you wake up and... <laughs> oh, this is hard. Yes. Yeah. This is work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. What happened? Yeah. What happened? See, what just happened? little things come in. Would you bow your heads in a word of prayer? Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is just a little bit. We'll give a couple of calls.